So I want to start off with posing a question. How many people in this room have been homeless? How many people have not known what it's like to have a place to come back to? Have been sleeping rough or not sure where they're going to spend the next week or month or what they're going to do? Too many. Too many people. I've run into so many people and unfortunately when I talk about my story, man, there's so many people that are like, hey, you know, thank you for talking about that because that happened to me too. I think a lot of people know someone in their life where that's happened. And um, I want to share a little bit about that. And I want to share a little bit about next generation of people coming in and what that journey looks like. Since you heard in the introduction, uh, we do all this great stuff. It's a lot of fun. We've got a nice office. We got, you know, a team of 20 in Australia, a team in London as well, and all these big clients. But it wasn't always that way, right? A lot of people look at me and they look at my age, and the first thing they assume is they got one of those small loans of a million dollars, right? You know, this, here's a guy who's got some family wealth. His dad, his family has propped him up and helped him succeed in the business world. And that's, and that's okay, but that's the mindset or the perception that a lot of people have when they see us. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't always that way, right? It wasn't always that we were successful. There was this big thing. I was literally homeless when I was 17. I was sleeping under bridges. I was couch surfing using gum tree. I was doing all sorts of things to find places to go and to stay. Um, and it was a crazy journey. It was an absolutely crazy, crazy journey. Um, but why I bring that up and why I want to talk about that is because we're in, a, we're in an exciting time. We're in an exciting time where people, my generation, are coming in and becoming adults, getting into the workforce and doing things and challenging things. And why that's exciting, I, I want to share with you. All right, but, but quickly, back to my background. Um, when I was um, 17 and homeless, I was applying for jobs, like everyone, right? I had this skill set of, of SEO, what I do now, um, and it's a form of digital marketing, right, to give you a bit of a background. And I would apply desperately for jobs, right, desperately. Uh, and I was told I was too young, I was too passionate, as if that's even a thing. I was told that I didn't have enough experience in a platform that had only been around for a few years. Um, and these were the things that I was told. And so I was rejected at every chance that I got. And that mindset was, this guy's too young. He's not going to have a place at this company. And that was only five years ago. And so there's two major things that I want to talk about that I'm excited about for the next generation, as well as what has gotten me so far in my career so far. And the first of those two things is resilience, right? And resilience is so important. Each and every single person in this room will go through some resilient challenge, or you probably have gone through some hardship that you've overcome. And those hardships form you as a person today. They build you and they make who you are. I'm sure that I wouldn't have become or done any of the things that I've done now if it wasn't for my experiences or what I went through. I'm sure. That's a hard thing to talk about and a hard thing to admit because you wouldn't wish it upon anyone or want to go through it again. But these things form you. Now when I talk about resilience, I'm not just talking about the ability to get up again. I'm talking about the ability to step outside of your comfort zone, to do things you don't want to do. I'm talking about the ability to bounce back from failure. And what's exciting is this next generation is failure is a part of our life. We talk about it constantly. We always say, fail fast, fail fast. And we get that and we understand we'll make mistakes. But as long as we grow and we learn, we're looking forward to that. But stepping outside of your comfort zone. Now that's something that everyone in this room gets, a, gets faced with probably every day or at least every week. You get an opportunity in your life, if you think about it, to do something that you know in your head is probably going to be good for you. It might be stepping up and doing a TEDx. It might be accepting a role that you don't think you're quite ready for. But something like that will happen. I remember the very first time when I was just starting out that an opportunity like that presented itself, right? I was 17, I was desperate to get clients. <laughs> Literally, I was just like, I know I can do it. I know I can. I just need someone to take a chance. So I was going to all these networking events and you can imagine Man, looking back at myself, uh, staggering. I was this 17-year-old kid. I don't know if you saw those photos back there. 
Look at that handsome man. <laughs> Can you imagine that guy rocking up to a business networking event with 300 people? So I rock up to this event and I'm already stepping outside of my comfort zone by doing that, right? You know, all these people, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I got these grubby shoes and even now, if you think I dress poorly now, you should have seen me back then. <laughs> um, and so I'd rock up to these events and a dreaded thing happened, right? And I think all the organizers here at TEDx will appreciate this. When a speaker doesn't rock up, right? Oh no, you've organized this whole thing. You've got all these people there and a speaker doesn't rock up. And that's what happened at one of these events. 300 people in the crowd waiting. And so they're staggering, they're like, what do we do? And they're like, well, would anyone, anyone in the audience, put your hands up if you'd like to do a quick two minute pitch of your business. So it goes out to the audience, everyone puts their hand up, right, everyone. I hated public speaking, right? Like most of the people in the room, I was like, this is the worst thing, I'm not doing it. But I saw everyone else and I'm like, all right, I already look young. I don't want to look like a clown by not putting my hand up. And also doing the odds in my head, one in 300, that's a pretty good gamble. I'll take those odds. <laughs> so what do I do? I raise my hand. And as luck or fate or destiny or whatever you want to call it happens, I got picked, right? So you can imagine, right? I'll give you a bit of a sample of what that would have looked like. Harry gets to the stage. Luckily I had a podium, so I was just sitting behind that and I was sitting there. I was shaking, I was like, oh, hey guys, my name's uh, Harry, and uh, I really like SEO, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I was free, I was sweating, right, down my face, and that was my first public speaking experience, you know, by any, by any measure of that, that was a catastrophic failure. I mean, imagine if I still perform like that today. Bad times. It's a skill that I had to step outside of my comfort zone, acquire, and get better at. And today, you know, not that nervous about it, I see it more as an opportunity, but back then, oh my gosh, was I nervous. But, but the most important thing, and what was astounding about that experience, is when I got off that stage, I had people wanting to talk to me. Why? Because a 17-year-old kid was on that stage, stepping out of his comfort zone and giving something a go. Now remove the 17-year-old part, that could be you as well. People appreciate people giving a go, right? We're Australians, we love that go get attitude and so you'll always get someone in that crowd you know that will go hey you know what I think that could be better but I love the fact that you got up and you did that and what I'm really excited to say is that a lot of the whole generation of people is becoming like that as well more and more people are willing to do those things and that's really exciting the second thing that I think is really important is passion Right? And I think it's something that we value or are starting to value a lot. Passion for what we do. And our passion is the lifeblood of everything. You can overcome resilience and resilience is helped by passion. Because if you're passionate about what you do, it makes a serious, serious difference. Because if you start a business to make money or you're doing something for the wrong reasons, nine times out of 10 it won't succeed. But if you follow what you're passionate about, you will make it work. You will find a way to make that passion. You won't feel like you're losing out by growing or making mistakes or doing things wrong because you know, I'm passionate about this thing. Now, why this photo is so important to me, other than challenging the record of how wide someone can possibly open their mouth. <laughs> That photo uh, happened a few months ago when we were named the best agency in Australia over big, I'm talking Sydney Opera House, big, big agencies, agencies with hundreds of people. Some of them had thousands of staff around the world. And us, little old Studio Hawk was, was named as the best agency, right? How the hell does that happen, right? Especially, you know, five years ago on the streets, you know, and then all those people around me we have a saying in Studio Hawk, hire for attitude, train for competency, right? And it's a big thing that I'm noticing across the industry. And, it's, and it is true because if I find someone that's passionate about what they do, they will learn it. They will do it. They will find a way of making it happen. But if you find someone that's complacent, that's like, ah, you know, I've done this for, you know, a while, I'm not that interested in it. Sure, they might have the skills, but are they going to want to apply them? Are they going to learn more? And why that's becoming so relevant with this next generation is because we're not going to work jobs we're not interested in. So, man, I, I, I do a lot of conferences and a lot of stuff like that. And, and people come up to me after and being like, 
man, you're one of the good ones, aren't you? I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, well, I know a lot of young people, and let's be honest, they're pro pretty lazy. You're one of those not lazy ones. And I just think that, I think, imagine if you said that about someone's race, about someone's sex, you know? Oh, you're one of the good females. You, you, you know what you're doing, right? How condescending is that? And so people just need to understand it's a little bit different, right? For the first time in any generation, I'm from a generation where my earliest memory is on the internet. I cannot remember a time where there was no internet. I cannot remember a time where there was no cell phones. I was raised into these things. I learned everything I've learned from the internet. I went to no university. I was at school 20% of the time, but I learned these skills because they were at my fingertips. And each and every one of you can become an expert in pretty much anything you want. So a device that sits in your pocket is at your house, pretty much accessible to anyone. Even homeless people can go to Vinnie's and stuff where, where I started. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of potential ways to get connected to the world now. So it is that education and people want to grow, right? People have this mindset of growth. We don't want to stay in roles where we're not growing. And that's a core difference as well. Traditionally, people would be happy to work nine to five to get a home loan, to do all these things. My generation looks at home loans and goes, there is no way I'm ever going to get a million dollars. There's no way. How am I ever going to afford that? And so we instead go, well, I want to grow in a role. I want to become better and I want to ascend like that. And it's a different way of thinking. It's not lazy. It's just a different way. And we have more comparative through the internet that we can see that there is other ways of doing things and we can become nimble and agile. And what's so important about that passion over skills thing is, look, skills are great and skills are important, but experience is something that's weird in the digital world. In what I do, if you said you were doing it two years ago, chances are two years ago, the same work you're doing is irrelevant today. Completely irrelevant, completely changed. Google has had algorithm updates. It's all different. So if you're gonna hire someone that has those skills or has been doing it for two years, or are you gonna hire someone that wants to learn those skills and is passionate about it? And this goes for a lot of industries, because face it, a lot of industries are changing, right? Every industry is changing and going through a rapid acceleration phase right now. It's insane. So I'm really excited about that next generation, and I think that those skills have really helped me a lot in my journey. You know, that passion, I've always come back to down to why do I do what I do, right? It's never been for money. You know, I've got more money than I ever thought I would ever have. And we bring it back to training new people, helping at-risk people by finding people that with a passion and bringing them in. But my favorite, absolute favorite thing of all is, is a saying. And I want you guys to think about what you were doing five years ago. Right? What were you doing five years ago? And I want you to think long and hard. What, did I pursue my passion? Did I do what I wanted to do? Did I achieve the things that I thought I would achieve? Why, why not? What happened? What do I want to do over the next year? Have I set my New Year's resolution? Am I going towards that? What's going on? And the most profound thing is that humans, we're weird creatures, right? I think we can all agree on that. But one thing that is absolutely staggering is all of the time, we underestimate, well, we overestimate what we can do in one year and underestimate what we can do in five, right? We always think about in the next year, I want this promotion, I want to do that, I want to be speaking, I want to be doing this. If we don't think about the next five years, and it's those five years that are pivotal. In five years, I've gone from homeless and couch surfing to where we are today, helping the next generation, working with them, leading some of Australia's biggest accounts and campaigns, and I'm really excited about what that next generation of people is going to do and the impact that they're going to have. In the first year, I was still couch surfing, right? There is no way I could have accomplished a fraction of it, even with the most lofty goals in mind. So if you're sitting there and you're thinking, I didn't get to where I wanted in a year, don't think like that. Where do I want to be in five years? Am I following my passion to do it? Am I resilient enough to get there? Will I give it my all? Will I bounce back? Am I going to step outside of my comfort zone? Because I'm not special. I'm not smarter. I'm not gifted. I learned what I know through the internet. But I had those two things. So I challenge you to think about those two things and find how you can apply them in your life to make a difference. 
And think about the next time you see a young person. Don't go, here's a lazy Instagram person. Think about how it's different, how evolution or how culture is changing and how fast things are shifting. Thank you.